So if we maybe take a step back once we were talking about, I guess, a system collapsing. And then from there, we went to uh, this potential, well, actual money, which is has been gold for cent, uh, millennium. So do you see us going to sort of a Bretton Wood 2.0? Is that what you think? Uh, well, not easily, I think is a short answer, because uh, there is so much um, intellectual investment in um, fiat currencies. There is also the geopolitical situation because China and Russia have you know, accumulated gold. They have based their economies to a large extent on gold, though they have yet to declare that. Um, what this means is that if Russia, and they've, they've, as I understand it, they have actually passed the enabling legislation to do this. So this is an interesting one. If Russia moves the gold that it holds in other state accounts into the reserve bank and declares its total gold holdings as reserves, it will then have 12,000 tons of gold reserves, which is way in excess of what the Americans have. And it is widely suspected that the Americans 8,133 tons isn't actually there, or if it is there, it is not entire. So. That's the first thing. The other thing is, if you look at the Chinese situation, um, I have assessed in the past, and I'm very confident of this assessment, that the state itself has accumulated over 30,000 tonnes by now. Uh, and furthermore, um, once it had accumulated the bulk of what the state wanted, in 2002, it then authorised its population to start accumulating gold as well. It set up the Shanghai Gold Exchange that year. And since then, uh, the general public, the wider public, has had delivered, this is called withdrawals from the, um, from the vaulting system, the Shanghai Gold Exchange's vaulting system, has had delivered to it over 20,000 tonnes. So 50,000 tonnes of gold currently is, uh, at least, is, is, is in China. So where does that leave us? I mean, in Britain, our wonderful fellow uh, as chancellor, one of the first things Gordon Brown did was um, he flogged most of our gold at uh, under 300 bucks an ounce. <laughs> it's got to be one of the worst deals ever. Anyway, this is this. Um... <laughs> anyway, I won't I won't um, delay. But Canada, Canada, for God's sake, that's got rid of all their gold as well. The Swiss National Bank has got rid of quite a lot of it. So I don't know what, what, what they've got now, but, um, you know, I mean, that, and that's a tragedy because uh, the uh, Swiss people um, didn't feel that they needed to accumulate gold because their central bank accumulated gold and it was the main plank of its reserves. But they now find themselves in a situation where the, you know, the bank has gone all Keynesian on them. Um, got rid of quite a lot of the reserves, started investing in equities and bonds, foreign equities, foreign bonds to try. I mean, you know, the idea basically was to, to buy foreign currencies. So sell Swissy, buy foreign currencies. That way you get the Swiss franc rate down. This is pure Keynesianism. <laughs> and, uh, you know, what do you do with the proceeds once you've got dollars and um, euros and things? Like, well, you go and buy bonds and equities. And that's what they did. And they've now lost 20 percent equivalent of their GDP. I mean, for goodness sake, the Swiss are in a hell of a mess on this. And I think that's very, very sad. It's very sad for the Swiss people who have not protected themselves as you, you would have thought they would. Um, so, that, you know, this is not good news. It really is not good news.